A mechanical calculator, or calculating machine, was a mechanical device used to perform automatically the basic operations of arithmetic. Most mechanical calculators were comparable in size to small desktop computers and have been rendered obsolete by the advent of the electronic calculator. Surviving notes from Wilhelm Schirkard in 1623 report that he designed and had built the earliest of the modern attempts at mechanizing calculation. His machine was composed of two sets of technologies. First an abacus made of Napier's bones, to simplify multiplications and divisions first described six years earlier in 1617, and for the mechanical part, it had a dialed pedometer to perform additions and subtractions. A study of the surviving notes shows a machine that would have jammed after a few entries on the same dial, and that it could be damaged if a carry had to be propagated over a few digits. Schickard abandoned his project in 1624 and never mentioned it again until his death 11 years later in 1635, two decades after Schickard's failed attempt in 1642. Blaise Pascal decisively solved these particular problems with his invention of the mechanical calculator, co-opted into his father's labor as tax collector in Rouen. Pascal designed the calculator to help in the large amount of tedious arithmetic required. It was called Pascal's calculator or Pascaline. Thomas Arithmometer, the first commercially successful machine, was manufactured 200 years later in 1851. It was the first mechanical calculator strong enough and reliable enough to be used daily in an office environment. For 40 years the arithmometer was the only type of mechanical calculator available for sale. The Comptometer, introduced in 1887, was the first machine to use a keyboard which consisted of columns of nine keys for each digit. The Dalton Adding Machine, manufactured from 1902, was the first to have a 10-key keyboard. Electric motors were used on some mechanical calculators from 1901. In 1961, a Comptometer-type machine, the Anita MK7 from Sunlock Comptometer Limited, became the first desktop mechanical calculator to receive an all-electronic calculator engine, creating the link in between these two industries and marking the beginning of its decline. The production of mechanical calculators came to a stop in the middle of the 1970s closing an industry that had lasted for 120 years. Charles Babbage designed two new kinds of mechanical calculators, which were so big that they required the power of a steam engine to operate, and that were too sophisticated to be built in his lifetime. The first one was an automatic mechanical calculator, his difference engine, which could automatically compute and print mathematical tables. In 1855, Georg Scheutz became the first of a handful of designers to succeed at building a smaller and simpler model of his difference engine. The second one was a programmable mechanical calculator, his analytical engine, which Babbage started to design in 1834. In less than two years he had sketched out many of the salient features of the modern computer. A crucial step was the adoption of a punched card system derived from the Jacquard loom, making it infinitely programmable. In 1937, Howard Aiken convinced IBM to design and build the ASCC Mark I, the first machine of its kind. Based on the architecture of the analytical engine, when the machine was finished some hailed it as Babbage's dream come true. Ancient History the desire to economize time and mental effort in arithmetical computations, and to eliminate human liability to error, is probably as old as the science of arithmetic itself. This desire has led to the design and construction of a variety of aids to calculation, beginning with groups of small objects, such as pebbles, first used loosely, later as counters on ruled boards, and later still as beads mounted on wires fixed in a frame, as in the abacus. 
This instrument was probably invented by the Semitic races and later adopted in India, whence it spread westward throughout Europe and eastward to China and Japan. After the development of the abacus, no further advances were made until John Napier devised his numbering rods, or Napier's bones, in 1617. Various forms of the bones appeared, some approaching the beginning of mechanical computation. But it was not until 1642 that Blaise Pascal gave us the first mechanical calculating machine in the sense that the term is used today. Howard Aiken proposed automatic calculating machine. Presented to IBM in 1937 a short list of other precursors to the mechanical calculator must include a group of mechanical analog computers which once set, are only modified by the continuous and repeated action of their actuators. Before common era, there are odometers and the Antikythera mechanism, an out-of-place, unique geared astronomical clock, followed more than a millennium later by early mechanical clocks, geared astrolabes and followed in the 15th century by pedometers. These machines were all made of toothed gears linked by some sort of carry mechanisms. These machines always produce identical results for identical initial settings unlike a mechanical calculator where all the wheels are independent, but are also linked together by the rules of arithmetic. The 17th century Overview The 17th century marked the beginning of the history of mechanical calculators, as it saw the invention of its first machines, including Pascal's calculator, in 1642. Blaise Pascal had invented a machine which he presented as being able to perform computations that were previously thought to be only humanly possible, but he wasn't successful in creating an industry. In a sense, Pascal's invention was premature, in that the mechanical arts in his time were not sufficiently advanced to enable his machine to be made at an economic price, with the accuracy and strength needed for reasonably long use. This difficulty was not overcome until well on into the 19th century, by which time also a renewed stimulus to invention was given by the need for many kinds of calculation more intricate than those considered by Pascal S. Chapman, Pascal, to Centenary Celebration, London. The 17th century also saw the invention of some very powerful tools to aid arithmetic calculations like Napier's bones logarithmic tables and the slide rule which for their ease of use by scientists in multiplying and dividing, ruled over and impeded the use and development of mechanical calculators until the production release of the arithmometer in the mid-19th century. Invention of the mechanical calculator Blaise Pascal invented a mechanical calculator with a sophisticated carry mechanism in 1642. After three years of effort and 50 prototypes he introduced his calculator to the public. He built 20 of these machines in the following 10 years. This machine could add and subtract two numbers directly and multiply and divide by repetition, since, unlike Schickard's machine, the Pascaline dials could only rotate in one direction zeroing it after each calculation required the operator to dial in all 9s and then propagate a carry right through the machine. This suggests that the carry mechanism would have proved itself in practice many times over. This is a testament to the quality of the Pascaline because none of the 17th and 18th century criticisms of the machine mentioned a problem with the carry mechanism and yet it was fully tested on all the machines by their resets all the time. Pascal's invention of the calculating machine, just 300 years ago, was made while he was a youth of 19. He was spurred to it by seeing the burden of arithmetical labor involved in his father's official work as supervisor of taxes at Rouen. He conceived the idea of doing the work mechanically, and developed a design appropriate for this purpose, showing herein the same combination of pure science and mechanical genius that characterized his whole life. But it was one thing to conceive and design the machine, and another to get it made and put into use. Here were needed those practical gifts that he displayed later in his inventions. S. Chapman, Pascal, to Centenary Celebration, London, in 1672. 
Gottfried Leibniz started working on adding direct multiplication to what he understood was the working of Pascal's calculator. However, it is doubtful that he had ever fully seen the mechanism and the method could not have worked because of the lack of reversible rotation in the mechanism. Accordingly he eventually designed an entirely new machine called the Stepped Reckoner, it used his Leibniz wheels was the first two-motion calculator, the first to use curses and the first to have a movable carriage. Leibniz built two stepped reckoners, one in 1694 and one in 1706. Only the machine built in 1694 is known to exist. It was rediscovered at the end of the 19th century, having been forgotten in an attic in the University of Göttingen. In 1893, the German calculating machine inventor Arthur Bacardet was asked to put Leibniz's machine in operating condition if possible. His report was favorable except for the sequence in the carry. Leibniz had invented his namesake wheel and the principle of a two-motion calculator, but after 40 years of development he wasn't able to produce a machine that was fully operational. This makes Pascal's calculator the only working mechanical calculator in the 17th century. Leibniz was also the first person to describe a pinwheel calculator. He once said, It is unworthy of excellent men to lose hours like slaves in the labor of calculation which could safely be relegated to anyone else. If machines were used, other calculating machines shikard. Pascal and Leibniz were inevitably inspired by the role of clockwork which was highly celebrated in the 17th century. However, simple-minded application of interlinked gears was insufficient for any of their purposes. Schickard introduced the use of a single-toothed mutilated gear to enable the curry to take place. Pascal improved on that with his famous weighted sautoir. Leibniz went even further in relation to the ability to utilize a movable carriage to perform multiplication more efficiently, albeit at the expense of a fully working carry mechanism. I devised a third which works by springs and which has a very simple design. This is the one, as I have already stated, that I used many times hidden in the plain sight of an infinity of persons and which is still in operating order. Nevertheless, while always improving on it, I found reasons to change its design. Pascal, advertisement necessary to those who have curiosity to see the arithmetic machine, and to operate it, when, several years ago, I saw for the first time an instrument which, when carried, automatically records the numbers of steps by a pedestrian. It occurred to me at once that the entire arithmetic could be subjected to a similar kind of machinery so that not only counting but also addition and subtraction, multiplication and division could be accomplished by a suitably arranged machine easily, promptly, and with sure results. Leibniz, on his calculating machine, the principle of the clock for a direct entry calculating machine couldn't be implemented to create a fully effective calculating machine without additional innovation with the technological capabilities of the 17th century, because their gears would jam when a carry had to be moved several places along the accumulator. The only 17th century calculating clocks that have survived to this day do not have a machine-wide carry mechanism and therefore cannot be called called fully effective mechanical calculators. A much more successful calculating clock was built by the Italian Giovanni Pelleni in the 18th century and was a two-motion calculating clock. In 1623, Wilhelm Schickard, a German professor of Hebrew and astronomy, designed a calculating clock which he drew on two letters that he wrote to Johannes Kepler. The first machine to be built by a professional was destroyed during its construction and Schickard abandoned his project in 1624. These drawings had appeared in various publications over the centuries, starting in 1718 with a book of Kepler's letters by Michael Hanch. But in 1957 it was presented for the first time as a long-lost mechanical calculator by Dr. Franz Hammer. The building of the first replica in the 1960s showed that Schickard's machine had an unfinished design and therefore wheels and springs were added to make it work. 
The use of these replicas showed that the single tooth wheel, when used within a calculating clock, was an inadequate carry mechanism. This did not mean that such a machine could not be used in practice, but the operator when faced with the mechanism resisting rotation, in the unusual circumstances of a carry being required beyond three dials, would need to help the subsequent carry to propagate. Around 1643, a French clockmaker from Rouen, after hearing of Pascal's work, built what he claimed to be a calculating clock of his own design. Pascal fired all his employees and stopped developing his calculator as soon as he heard of the news. It is only after being assured that his invention would be protected by a royal privilege that he restarted his activity. A careful examination of this calculating clock showed that it didn't work properly and Pascal called it an avorton. In 1659, the Italian Tito Livia Burattini built a machine with nine independent wheels. Each one of these wheels was paired with a smaller carry wheel. At the end of an operation the user had to either manually add each carry to the next digit or mentally add these numbers to create the final result. In 1666, Samuel Morland invented a machine designed to add sums of money, but it was not a true adding machine since the carry was added to a small carry wheel situated above each digit and not directly to the next digit. It was very similar to Burattini's machine. Morland created also a multiplying machines with interchangeable disks based on Napier's bones. Taken together these two machines provided a capacity similar to that of the invention of Schickard, although it is doubtful that Morland ever encountered Schickard's calculating clock. In 1673, the French clockmaker René Grillet described in Curiosities Mais Thématiques de l'invention du senior Grillet. Hall Lodger of Paris a calculating machine that would be more compact than Pascal's calculator and reversible for subtraction. The only two grillet machines known have no carry mechanism. Displaying three lines of nine independent dials they also have nine rotating Napier's rod for multiplication and division. Contrary to Grillet's claim, it was not a mechanical calculator after all. The 18th century Overview The 18th century saw the first mechanical calculator that could perform a multiplication automatically, designed and built by Giovanni. Paleni in 1709 and made of wood. It was the first successful calculating clock. For all the machines built in this century, division still required the operator to decide when to stop a repeated subtraction at each index, and therefore these machines were only providing a help in dividing, like in Abacus. Both pinwheel calculators and Leibniz wheel calculators were built with a few unsuccessful attempts at their commercialization. Prototypes and limited runs in 1709, the Italian Giovanni Paleni was the first to build a calculator that could multiply automatically. It used a pinwheel design, was the first operational calculating clock and was made of wood. He destroyed it after hearing that Antonius Brown had received 10,000 goldens for dedicating a pinwheel machine of his own design to the Emperor Charles VI of Vienna. In 1725, the French Academy of Sciences certified a calculating machine derived from Pascal's calculator designed by Lepine, a French craftsman. The machine was a bridge in between Pascal's calculator and a calculating clock. The carry transmissions were performed simultaneously, like in a calculating clock and therefore, the machine must have jammed beyond a few simultaneous carry transmissions. In 1727, a German, Antonius Brown, presented the first fully functional four operations machine to Charles VI, Holy Roman Emperor in Vienna. It was cylindrical in shape and was made of steel, silver and brass. It was finely decorated and looked like a Renaissance table clock. His dedication to the emperor engraved on the top of the machine also reads, to make easy to ignorant people, addition, subtraction.
multiplication and even division. In 1730, the French Academy of Sciences certified three machines designed by Hilarine de Bois de Sando. The first one used a single tooth carry mechanism which, according to Bois de Sando, wouldn't work properly if a carry had to be moved more than two places. The two other machines used springs that were gradually armed until they release their energy when a carry had to be moved forward. It was similar to Pascal's calculator but instead of using the energy of gravity Boyce de Sando used the energy stored into the springs. In 1770, Philipp Mathors Hahn, a German pastor, built two circular calculating machines based on Leibniz cylinders. J.C. Schuster, Hahn's brother-in-law, built a few machines of Hahn's design into the early 19th century. In 1775, Lord Stanhope of the United Kingdom designed a pinwheel machine. It was set in a rectangular box with a handle on the side. He also designed a machine using Leibniz wheels in 1777. In 1777 Stanhope produced the Logic Demonstrator, a machine designed to solve problems in formal logic. This device marked the beginning of a new approach to the solution of logical problems by mechanical methods. In 1784, Johann Helfrich Müller built a machine very similar to Hahn's machine. 